straws. This is the passageway that the astronauts would have used. As you see it retreating uh, there on the left. This is the passageway the astronauts would use in order to get out of the spacecraft uh, in the event anything had happened uh, up to this time. Now, of course, the only way they can get out, get out in the event of uh, some difficulty is to eject, which they can do uh, even at this point. And that would be uh, the least desirable way for them to uh, abort the mission in any way, because, of course, it would be extremely dangerous. Extremely dangerous. Well, four minutes and 27 seconds to go before liftoff, before the start of this historic mission. A mission that has never been flown before. They've never used the solid rocket boosters. They never before have sent a spacecraft into orbit that is going to come down as a plane landing essentially as a glider, a powerless glider. Look at those huge engines getting ready to receive now the millions and millions of pounds of thrust that will uh, catapult this spacecraft and this uh, really strange assemblage off the, uh, off the Earth. We're going to go to Lynn Schur, who is down at the VIP section now, to tell you a little bit more about what to listen for, some of the acronyms that will be used as uh, the launch proceeds. Lynn? Yes, Frank, I am here at the VIP Center and right in the shadow of the VAB. That means I'm with some very important people in the shadow of the Vehicle Assembly Building. And it's easy to use these acronyms around here because sometimes it seems as if NASA is just one giant acronym. For example, here are some of the terms that everyone is going to be hearing in just a few minutes. First of all, there is SRB SEP, and that's when the two solid rocket boosters will fall away. And then you'll hear MECO, which is main engine cutoff, just over eight minutes into the flight. And then there's ETSEP, when the external tank emptied of its liquid fuel is jettisoned. Two acronyms no one here wants to use or wants anyone to hear. RTLS, which is return to launch site, the most dangerous forced landing right here back at Kennedy Space Center. And AOA, abort once around. That's a forced landing after only one orbit around the Earth. But I must tell you, Frank, no one here at the VIP Center is saying anything in acronyms right now. All they're thinking about is the word liftoff. They started to cheer when the clock began again at nine minutes. Everybody here anxiously hoping waiting, watching. Back to you, Frank. The President's message that uh, Jules mentioned a moment ago said, in part, you go forward this morning on a daring enterprise and you carry the hopes and prayers of all Americans with you. And astronaut John Young, the commander of the mission, replied, that's a right fine speech. We sure appreciate it. All right, we have two minutes and 17, 16, 15 seconds to go to launch. Jules and Jean. That's it, Frank. Looks <clears throat> good, huh? That's the commitment to go. Yeah. The white, our, white room is back. Uh, the APUs, or auxiliary power units, have started, which power the flight surfaces and controls. And unless something catastrophic goes wrong, it's a go. By the way, everything happening now is being done automatically by computers. They can be overridden, but the only so many thousands of things are happening all at once, Gene. Well, it's all in the computer checkout. There's too many things uh, for any one man or team of men to do. We're monitoring effectively in the control center the, uh, the computers themselves who are in, in turn monitoring all the systems of the boosters in the spacecraft. I might add that uh, the president's message was a, uh, was a very moving message. And uh, believe me, at this point in time, I can testify by my own personal experience uh, a prayer now and then helps because uh, uh, you need all the help you can get on one of these missions. It's emotional but precise. Well, there are plenty of prayers being said right now. Well, and I'll tell you, my, uh, I'm getting a few butterflies uh, sure. myself right now. No matter how many times you watch these things go, boy, you've got to realize well, every what time, it means. Every time's the first time, whether you've been there before or not. And, uh, Godspeed with John and Crip. It's going to be a great one. Godspeed indeed. Water will be armed uh, just a couple seconds from now. It has been armed. Less than a minute. 45 seconds and counting. That's a blast of cooling water, Frank, uh, that protects the heat tiles from the blast of the uh, solid rocket on. engines seconds. to shield just, them so uh, they're not knocked away off. From switching to the redundant sense sequencer. T minus 27 right, seconds. Now. We have gone for redundant set sequencer start. T minus 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15, 14, 13. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 
four. We've gone for main engine start. We have main engine start. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Arcing straight up into the sky. What an unbelievable sight. I didn't think anything could match an Apollo. Roger. Trail of uh, fumes you see is from those solid rocket boosters. Which are going to come off. Columbia, Houston, you're going problem. Roger, going problem. About a minute. They're through the maximum uh, maximum aerodynamic pressure now to get back to 100%. They've actually throttled back a little bit to get through the maximum pressure on the vehicle, and now they've gone back to full throttle. And everything looks to be perfectly perfect, perfectly normal American thunder in the skies. Roger, Columbia on a nice ride. You're lofting a little bit, so you'll probably be slightly high in staging. One minute, 45 seconds. Coming up on go, no, go. Columbia, you're in negative seat. Okay, there. So that call up says uh, that uh, Columbia, has the altitude is too high for ejection seat use. Columbia, you're going for SRB step. All right, they're cleared to get rid of the SRBs. Two minutes, four seconds. Standing by for SRB step confirmation. <laughs> And too high to use ejection seats, but not even needing them. There it is. There go. Roger on the step, Columbia. Let's see with the ball. Hallelujah, baby. Mark, uh, two minutes, 20 seconds. Confirmed solid rocket booster step. Both of them are gone. And now they'll come down. Mark, uh, two minutes, 30 seconds. On, on board guidance is converging this program. Columbia is now steering for its precise window in space for main engine cutoff. They're at an altitude Mark, of over 30 seconds. miles Columbia now. now 39 nautical miles. miles in altitude, uh, 42 nautical miles downrange. Mark, uh, 2 minutes, uh, 50 seconds. Columbia, yeah. you're looking a little hot. All your calls will be a little early. Columbia now right. has two-engine rotors. It'll be hot. A little faster than I thought. Mark, 3 minutes. Young and Crip and Rayleigh moving out. Now velocity now reading uh, 6,200 feet per second. And that's over 5,000 miles an hour already, Jules. Mark, uh, 3 minutes, 15 seconds. Columbia now 51 nautical miles in altitude, 66 nautical miles down range. Velocity now reading 6,500 feet per second. Mark, uh, 3 minutes, 30 seconds. Columbia now 55 nautical miles in altitude, 78 nautical miles down range. Mark, uh, 3 minutes, 40 seconds, uh, standing by for a return status check and mission control by Flight Director Neil Hutchinson. Columbia, Governor Green, to continue. Everything fine so far. The solid rocket boosters have fallen Mark, off. 3 minutes, 55 seconds, standing That's by separated. for Press D'Amico, which says Columbia should lose one engine. Columbia, uh, press stand by, Press D'Amico. Columbia continues flying forward. Coming up on the return. Thirty seconds, and if they, uh, they'll, they'll be on their way. Mark, uh, four minutes eight. Columbia, stand by for negative return. Mark, negative return. They're not coming back here. Here is Mark, a view uh, from minutes, a uh, chase plane, one of the several chase planes that have been sent out to uh, help track uh, uh, Capcom, Columbia as it goes. Capcom, Brandon 